Hello, welcome to another episode of Rock Kitchen. I'd like to give a special shout out to Wayfair for helping me find all of the Egyptian furnishings in my kitchen, as well as supplying me with the supply of Rachel Ray cookware. Today I'm going to be making a well-known favorite spaghetti, but I'm going to be doing things a little bit differently. I'm going to be stuffing some meatballs as well as using a different type of noodles. Now let's get right to it. All right, now I'm going to be using some ground turkey and I'm going to be using some diced cheese. Using the cheese that comes pre-shaped makes it easier in these little cubes so you can roll the turkey around it. Let's get ourselves a plate. So now what I'm doing is making sure that I roll the meatballs flat enough, put, placing one piece of cheese in the center. You don't want to overstuff it so it can cook on the way out. Roll it around evenly, close it up and make sure it's sealed tight by rolling it with between both hands and then cooking it on the stove at a between low and medium heat. Cooking it on the stove between low and medium heat so that the cheese inside won't ooze out before the meats get done cooking. Blake Fool. Innocent incantation number 94. Yeah. Mm -hmm, baby. scrambling those meatballs as well as put the pot of water on so they can begin to boil before you drop the noodles in. I like to season my water with a little oregano, some garlic, some onion, and maybe a little cumin or turmeric, something to add some other flavors, as well as pick the right oil to saute your meat in. The type of oil you use gives so much different flavor to the food. If you use olive oil, sesame oil, peanut oil, it's up to you. Make sure to give them one last check over. Make sure they're all sealed up so the cheese won't lose out. Oh, 
It's best to let them cook on one side first and make sure that side is cooked all the way through and begins to solidify and then roll them over so you can know you got a tight seal which usually takes about two to four minutes. I like to pay attention to where the pan is by telling how brown is getting on one side and move it around to get the heat evenly spread it across the pan. If you feel it's not cooking fast enough for you, depending on your pan and your stove's heat, turn it up. It's not too far. You're gonna have just enough heat instead of too much. It is most likely best to take your time. Cooking is a very patient sport. Now the cheese is starting to ooze out. Usually that means that it is done or it has come to the perfect temperature. If you feel like your meat hasn't done browning enough, I guess you can use it. I like to use a technique I call heat control. All you have to do is place a lid over the top, set it to a different eye that's not currently burning, and let the current build the heat continue to cook the meat to your point. And remember to gauge that decision off of what meat you're using. Right now I'm using turkey. This turkey is probably done. It usually takes pork or beef or chicken, different variations of heat, different temperature settings, as well as different frames of time. Remember to pay attention to that. Okay, I feel satisfied. Let's add the sauce. And it's an incantation. Number 75. Let's do this. is tomato basil of any kind. Doesn't matter the name brand. I like tomato and basil. And don't be afraid to taste your sauce and see if your sauce needs any additional flavors, whether it be more oregano, parsley, even if you want to add some cilantro, sausages, whatever. Make sure you taste it. Because if it don't taste well while you're cooking it, it's not going to taste well when you plate it. I like to wait until the water comes to a rolling boil, which is when the bubbles are jumping from the bottom to the top, crazy and all over the place. And you can see the heat trail and the bubbles going all over the place. Before you add the noodles, I'm gonna wait to right just in there before I add the noodles. So we're not quite there yet. And there you have it, the rolling boil. Today I'm gonna to be using a noodle called, referred to as papadelli, if I'm saying that right. Make sure to rinse your noodles off. This comes very handy when you're cooking for a specific number of family members. You can just about measure two of these per bowl or three, depending on your family. You know how much who eats and what who don't eat. Make sure to periodically stir the noodles so you can catch if any of them are sticking together and separate them properly. Because boiling a whole pot of noodles to find out that it was just stuck together the entire time is not a pleasant surprise. Now this is the stage when you want to remove the noodles. They're all loose, they're all firm, but they're not quite done yet. This is called al dente. The noodles are perfect ready to take out because that heat is going to continuously cook them until they're just done right. You don't want that to happen in the water and they're just done right in the water. And as you take them out, they continue to cook with the sauce and everything else and then the heat in themselves and they overcook. And now you got a situation. I really want to serve them separately or put them all together. That's up to you. I'm going to mix it all together to save space in my refrigerator. The leftovers, I'll save space in my pots and pans, clean one of these pans out, and call it a day. Well, it's that heat I was talking about. It's continuously cooking. Look at the steam coming from this. There's no water in it. That's how your noodles get overcooked. So you have to take them out when they're just ready, which is called al dente. When they're just firm and they still taste a little raw, you take them right on out. Now when you're working with spaghetti, it's best to rinse the red sauce out of everything that you're using because the red sauce can stain your dishes. Even if you don't wash them right away, rinse everything out. Guess that's some cheese right there.
you don't have to use the same noodles every time with just spaghetti noodles. You can use any noodles. Far filet, bow tie, whatever you like. Rotini, ziti. Hey, it's up to you. Let's do the ultimate taste test. Mmm, that brand of sauce is a little different from what I usually use. But it's still good. You can just tell it's different. Maybe the different tomatoes, how they roasted them in the process of making their sauce. But it's still good. Now the last thing I like to add is... The last thing I like to add is... If you want to use toast, or, I usually use Texas toast. But depending on how the meal came out, it depends on what type of bread I use. I don't want to use Texas toast with the cheese and the butter and the sauces if the meal tastes a little bit too salty or if I use Parmesan cheese like I did and I stuff my meat with cheese then I'm good on that. I just get a regular piece of wheat toast, put it in a toaster oven, no butter, no nothing, dehydrate it a little bit, toast it up to where it's nice and crisp and I use that and I base that off of if I butter that or not or which bread to use based off of how the spaghetti came out. So you gotta always remember that. You don't wanna add too much sodium and too many parts of your food. So if you add a salt in your meat, make your noodles a little less salty. If you added too much salt when you was boiling your noodles, make the meat a little less salty. You gotta compensate. You can't just over, you know, or you just can't be excessive with the sodium. Now, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, make sure to check us out on Spotify, iTunes, Apple Music, Amazon Music, any other digital platform that you use, and remember to subscribe to the channel to join Chai Nation. Thank you.